Today's Cowboys report is made possible by Panda Subs. Head over to pandasubs.com and use promo code COWBOYS. When you do that, you'll get 30% off and you'll get free shipping as well. We've got some rumors, but first, some news around the Dallas Cowboys. Cobra Kai Forbath has been cut by the Cowboys, clearly making the most anticlimactic, frankly non-existent training camp battle in history. Over before it actually gets going, Greg Zerline is going to be the kicker for the Cowboys, unless he really, really sucks in camp and gets cut as well. Although, cutting Zerline would result in an extra almost half million being added to the cap, which is why this was never really a competition. The second the Cowboys signed Greg Zerline, who has been special teams coach John Fossil's kicker in L.A. for a significant amount of time, the second that happened, the writing was on the wall, on the wall for Kai Forbath. Now, my suspicion is there's a decent chance Kai Forbath might remain unsigned and the Cowboys could bring him back or somebody else back if Zerline does struggle. And he wasn't great last year amid injury, but historically he has been one of the better kickers in the NFL the past couple of seasons. He's going to be your guy. That is what the Cowboys are planning on. They planned on that the second that they paid him. So what is your confidence level in Greg Zerline? Rate this for me. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being you're panicking, 10 meaning he's going to make every single kick, he's about 70% last year, so I'm going to give it a 7. Although, reminder, don't settle for field goals, just score, and you'll be better off anyway. Now, Forbath was not the only Cowboys roster move, and they've made several here to get down to the 80-man roster limit. They had 89 players entering the, I guess, past week or so. They're now down to 80. Kai Forbath cut, Azur Kamara and Garrett Marino, both undrafted free agents, battling some injuries. They were weighed with the injury designation. Jordan Shun, Joe uh, Fortunato, the backup long snapper, and a fourth string back, they've both been cut as well. Two players have opted out as well, which we've mentioned before on the show, Stephen Guidry and Maurice Kennedy. They're not going to play this season. Two players have been placed on the COVID-19 list, John Vay Johnson and Savion Smith. They either tested positive or came into close contact with someone who tested positive. Smith, I know for a fact, did test positive, by the way. They will be able to return to the team once they're cleared. Once that happens, there will have to be another move or two, depending on when exactly they come back, in order for the Cowboys to get back to that 80-man roster limit. Now, we're going to get to the rumors here in a second. But first, Panda Supps has some awesome pre-work. And if you're like me... You kind of didn't go to the gym. You didn't just skip leg day. You skipped all of the days when we were all quarantined and all of that. Before I work out and before you work out, you should use pre-workout. It helps you stay focused, helps you get energized, keeps you pumped up. It's going to make your workouts better and more successful, and you'll save 30% off. There is a ton of product in that tin, by the way. It'll last you a long time. So head over to pandasups.com. Use promo code COWBOYS. Once you do that, you'll get the 30% off. And, by the way, you'll get free shipping as well. Over now to the rumors around the Dallas Cowboys. The Dak Prescott deal get done. Wait, we've heard this before. Yeah, two stars. I'm not changing on that one right now because I still have some doubts. I think many of you, understandably so, have some doubts as well. But Stephen Jones told the Dallas Cowboys team website, Oh, we're going to get the deal done, which he told me at the Combine, and he's, he's said for years now to season ticket holders, hey, we're going to get that deal done, and it hasn't gotten done yet, and it's very reasonable to have doubts because so far the Cowboys' decision-making and not getting a deal done long-term, it's a big mistake, by the way, not getting it done before 2019 season. It's only cost them money and cap space long-term. Here's what Stephen Jones had to say. We had a great visit with him at the deadline. We pushed to try and have a few more changes here and there to see if we could get it done. But he's got such a great outlook on the Dallas Cowboys, our football team. He's ready to go out and win a Super Bowl, which would only create more value for him, more value for the Cowboys. So we're fired up about it and still have nothing but 100% belief in Dak and his future here with the Dallas Cowboys and that we can ultimately get a deal done. He's special. As Jerry and I have said, we're 110%, so... Clearly, Stephen Jones can up the numbers involved in, in, in talks here. 110% behind him and ultimately feel like we'll get this deal done. I've heard this before. I, I am not going to put any more stock in the platitudes of, of Stephen Jones. I need to see action. The problem is for the Cowboys, once they're able to revisit contract talks after the season ends, Stephen Jones is going to go full Pikachu face when he goes, the deal's now cost how much? 
You are operating around 35-ish million on a four-year deal somewhere in that ballpark. It's going to be a well above 38 the next time these two sides talk. Because Dak's staring down a $37.7 million franchise tag. He ain't going to get tagged in 2022. They're not paying him $54.3 million for one year. There's no way. Which means he can just wait to free agency. And then he can make the final decision. Much like Amari Cooper of, do I take a little bit less or do I just chase the, the, the big bag somewhere else? So I'm going to make this the pin comment on today's video. I'm curious how you guys are voting right now. Will Dak and Dallas get a long-term deal done? Type Y for yes or type N for no. So if you get the ad break here on YouTube, take advantage of that. Scroll on down and cast your votes. All right, over now to Trevon Diggs. Will he start at cornerback? That's the speculation from the Dallas Morning News. And look, it makes some sense. And two stars on this one. The NFL will always claim it's a meritocracy, but it's not always because earlier drafted players, those who have been committed to by the organization, they're always going to get more chances. The Cowboys are going to try to give Diggs a starting spot. He's going to get every opportunity early on. Now, corners often struggle adjusting to the NFL. As DMN points out, Trevon Diggs has been able to spend time against his brother and a, a, a world-class receiver in Stephon Diggs. And that should help him out at least a little bit. Plus, Diggs, in practice, he's going to get to go up against Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, CeeDee Lamb. That's some pretty great and powerful practice reps. So because of the investment by the Dallas Cowboys, when camp opens up, when the pads go on, I think you'll see Diggs out there as CB2, which means I think Awuzie stays at cornerback one because, well, that safety transition doesn't make as much sense with the tricky timeline here. You know, Anthony Brown, I'm intrigued by. He'll battle Jordan Lewis for that nickel role. So I think there is a real chance Diggs gets that number two corner role. Even if he does, I would like to encourage everyone to temper their expectations. Diggs fared well at Alabama. Stephanie was facing Jamar Chase. The issue is, well, he's going to face a Jamar Chase every week, if, or worst case, every other week. So my expectations are a little bit lower for Diggs because he's a rookie. If he exceeds them, awesome, I'm fired up. But I don't want to be disappointed when, when Diggs puts together, let's say, a top five rookie cornerback season, which still might only be borderline starter. But for year one, that's really good. So cast your votes here again. Will Trevon Diggs be the cow or one of the Cowboys starters at corner in week one? I want you guys to type one for yes or type zero for no. Let's talk surprise cuts. Fan sided put out a list. And they surprised me by including Ha Ha Clinton Dix. So I guess mission accomplished here. I am only going to give it the one star. It is possible if this is a route the Cowboys wanted to pursue. I just don't think it's a sensible route for Dallas. If, if you were to cut him, you would leave about $2.25 uh, million in terms of dead money. So you'd save just under $2 million, something. He's only a $4 million cap, but that's not that expensive. And when I look at this, the safety depth for this organization, I know many of you believe in Donovan Wilson. He hasn't proven it yet, though, in an actual game that matters. Darian Thompson is a backup. Luther Kirk, <laughs> we'll see if he makes a team. So for me, even just as a depth piece, I could live with, let's say, Donovan Wilson explodes and earns a starting role I could live with paying Clinton Dix $4 million to be my backup safety. That's not that bad. He's a playmaker. I don't think the Cowboys would cut him. I'd be really surprised unless he and McCarthy don't get along, but I would figure McCarthy signed off on adding Clinton Dix. Do I expect five interceptions? No, I don't. But if I can get three, I mean, wouldn't that be nice since the Cowboys haven't had very many at all in recent seasons? Now, the purpose of the AP Insider article was surprise cuts, so Clinton Dix certainly qualified there. So with that in mind, focus on surprising cuts for the Cowboys. Let me know in the comments who you think one could be. A somewhat recent surprising cut was Jeff Hireman, the tight end formerly of the Denver Broncos. Should the Cowboys go sign him right now? That's what Inside the Star suggests, and I don't hate it. I'll give it two stars. I think there's some, some rationale behind it. Blake Jarwin is clearly your starter. Hireman's not going to surpass him anytime soon. I think he'd be a decent number two tight end. I really do. Cut by the Broncos again over this weekend. Hireman has some starting experience. And by the way, much like Devin Smith, Noah Brown, he played with Zeke at Ohio State as the Cowboys offense sure likes to add those Ohio State players. My issue here is that I'm not convinced he's that much better than Blake Bell. 
or that he's that much better than Dalton Schultz. They all kind of fit a similar mold. They are mostly run-blocking focused tight ends. Yeah, Hireman's had a bunch of starts in the NFL, hasn't done much with them. Noah Fant clearly, clearly the better option. But if you want to bring in Hireman to comp compete with Dalton Schultz or Blake Bell and the undrafted free agents on the roster, I could get on board with that. I'm not going to pay him very much money. And oh, by the way, frankly, at this point, if Blake Jarwin gets hurt and misses time, maybe you just don't use a tight end. You just go four wide or, or you put Pollard and Zeke out there at the same time. So, of course, my answer is if he's cheap enough, well, yeah, because there's no such thing as a cheap one-year deal with, with little to no guaranteed money. But should they sign him? I could, I could get on board. Let me know what you guys think, though. Type A for yes, or if you don't want him, I'll type B for no. How about the most valuable franchise? Is that the Dallas Cowboys? Uh, you know America's team checks in here at number one. Four stars on this one for the fifth straight year. The Dallas Cowboys lead the way on Forbes' list of most valuable pro sports franchises. It should not come as a surprise. This is the Dallas Cowboys. $5.5 billion is what they were valued at, which is significant because it's still 0 .5, 0 0.5 more than what the Yankees have. And the Yankees came in at number two at $5 billion, the Knicks at 4.6, Lakers at 4.4, and the Warriors, who have exploded in recent years, are now at 4.3. That's among all pro sports franchises. Among the NFL side, it's the Cowboys at 5.5, and then significantly lower. The Patriots at 4.1, Giants at 3.9, a huge rise up for the Rams. Again, that's that that's the power of the LA market. They're at 3.8, and the Niners at 3.5. It's no surprise the Cowboys are at number one. Although, if you're like me, you just would really like to see how much more the Cowboys would be worth if they could, I don't know, win a Super Bowl. Hey Cowboys fans, thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.